You are listening to a cassette recording of a channeling session from The Raw Contact, a series of 106 sessions that were conducted between 1981 and 1984 using a form of tuned trance telepathy. Throughout these sessions, a group of entities identified as Ra shared information regarding the Law of One, spiritual evolution, and a variety of esoteric topics through a series of questions and answers. The full text transcript of these recorded sessions can be read for free at lnlresearch.org, where you can also learn more about this audio and its origins. This recording is intended for personal study and is not available for commercial use. Please contact LNL Research if you wish to use this audio in any other way. Raw number 73, October 21st, 1981. I agree you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. You first please give me an indication of the instrument's condition. stated with the exception of the vital energy level which is distorted more nearly towards that which is and normal for this entity. Has the vanishing ritual that we have performed been helpful for this contact? I am well. The ritual described has gained with each working in making efficacious the purity of contact needed not only for the raw contact but for any working of the adept thank you we would like to thank Ra at this time for the opportunity to be of service for those in the sphere who would like to have information that we gain here in this enemy. You stated that free will one pointed in service to others has the potential for learning a great mass of light strength. I 
assume that the same holds precisely true for the service to self clarity. Is this correct? I am. Well, this is incorrect, but subtly so. In invocation and evocation of what may be termed negative entities or qualities the expression alerts the positively oriented equivalent however those upon the service to others path wait to be called and can only send love trying to get at was that this alerting of light strength is, as I see it, a process that is must be totally a fun function of free will, as you say, and as the desire and will, and purity of desire of the adept or operator increases the light, the alerting of light strength is this part of it the same for both positive and negative potentials and am I correct with this statement? I am to avoid confusion we shall simply restate for clarity your correct assumption. Those who are upon the service to others path may call upon the light strength in direct proportion to the strength and purity of their will to serve those upon the service to self path may call 
up on the dark strength in direct proportion to the strength and purity of their will to serve. I will undoubtedly make many errors in my statements today because what I'm going to do is try to uh, guess at how this works and let you correct me. I, in considering the exercise of the middle pillar, I have uh, thought it to be wrong in that it, the adept sees or visualizes the light moving downward from the crown chakra down to the feet. The Ra has stated that the Creator enters from the feet and moves upward, and that the spiraling light enters, or the spiraling light enters from the feet and moves upward. It seems to me that an adept learning light strength in visualizing the use of this would visualize it entering from the direction of the feet and energizing first the red energy center and moving upward through the energy centers in that fashion. Uh, is this correct? I am wrong. No. Could you tell me I am wrong in that statement? There are two concepts with which you deal. The first is the great way of the a development of the light in the microcosmic mind body spirit. It is assumed that an adept will have its energy centers functioning smoothly and in a balanced manner to its best effort before a magical working. All magical workings are based upon evocation and or invocation 
the first invocation of any magical working is that invocation of the magical personality as you are familiar with this term in the working of which you speak the first station is the beginning of the invocation of this magical personality which is invoked by the motion of putting on something. Since you do not have an item of apparel or talisman, the gesture which you have made is appropriate. The second station is the evocation of the great cross of life. This is an extension of the magical personality to become the creator Again, all invocations and evocations are drawn through the violet energy center. This may then be continued towards whatever energy centers are desired to be used. I am 
the action of the upward spiraling light drawn by the will to meet the inner light of the one infinite creator may be likened to the beating of the heart and the movement of the muscles surrounding the lungs and all the other functions of the parasympathetic nervous system. The calling of the adept may be likened to those nerve and muscle actions over which the mind, a body, spirit complex has conscious control. Previously you stated, I believe I'm correct in saying this, that where the two uh, directions meet, you have the measure, you might say, of the development of any particular mind-body-spirit complex. Am I correct? I am wrong. This is correct. In invoking the light that it would seem to me that the visualization of the invocation would be ended upon what the use was to be of the light. use could be for healing, could be for communication, it could be for the general awareness, you might say, of the creation and the creator. Would you please speak on the, this process and uh, my correctness in making this assumption. I am wrong. We shall offer some thoughts, though it is doubtful that we may exhaust this subject. It 
each visualization regardless of the point of the working begins with some work within the indigo ray as you may be aware of the ritual which you have a begun is completely working within the indigo ray. This is well for it is the gateway. From this a beginning light may be invoked for communication or for healing. You may note that in the ritual which we offered you to properly begin the raw workings. The first focus is upon the Creator. We would further note a point which is both a subtile and of some interest. The upward spiraling light developed in its path by the will and ultimately reaching an high place of meeting with the inward fire of the one creator still is only preparation for the work upon the mind, body, spirit, which may be done by the adept. And there is some crystallization of the energy centers used during 
each working so that the magician becomes more and more that which it seeks. More importantly, the time space a mind body spirit analog which is evoked as the magical personality has its only opportunity to gain rapidly from the experience of the catalytic action available to the third density space time mind body spirit thus the adept is aiding the creator greatly by offering a great catalyst to a, a greater portion of the a creation which is identified as the mind, body, spirit, the totality of an entity. personality a desire will and polarity are the keys I would then assume that the many so-called evangelists which we have in our society at present Many have great desire and very great will, but it seems to me that and possibly great polarity. It seems to me that in some cases there is a lack of information or awareness that creates a less than effective working of in the magical sense. Am I correct in this analysis? 
I am wrong. You are partially correct. In examining the polarity of a service to others working the free will must be seen as paramount those entities of which you speak are attempting to generate positive changes in consciousness while abridging free will. This causes the blockage of the magical nature of the working except in those cases wherein an entity freely desires to accept the working of the evangelist as you have called it. What was the orientation with respect to the, this type of communication uh, for the one known as uh, Jesus of Nazareth. I am well. You some of this entity's workings. It offered itself as teacher to those mind, body, spirit complexes which gathered to here and even then spoke as through a veil so as to leave room for those not wishing to hear. When this entity was asked to heal, it often 
times did so. Always ending the working with two admonitions. Firstly, that the entity healed had been healed by its faith. That is its ability to allow and accept changes through the violet ray into the gateway of intelligent energy. Secondly, saying always tell no one. These are the workings which attempt a maximal quality of free will while maintaining fidelity to the positive purity of the working. An observation of the working itself by another entity would seem to me to partially abridge free will in that a seemingly magical uh, occurrence had taken place as a, as a result of the working of an adept. This could be extended to any phenomenon which is other than normally acceptable. Could you speak on this paradox that is immediately a problem of anyone uh, doing healing? I am wrong. We are humble messengers of the law of one. To us there are no paradoxes. The workings which seem magical and therefore seem to infringe upon free will do not in themselves do so. For the distortions of perception are
occurs in this circumstance only if the entity doing the working ascribes the authorship of this event to its self or its own skills. Those who state that no working comes from it but only through it is infringing upon free will. You, you said that if the entity says that no working comes from it, but only through it, it is also infringing, is that correct? I am wrong. This is incorrect. We said that in that event there is no infringement. One known as Jesus accumulated twelve disciples. What was his purpose uh, in having these disciples? I am well. What is the purpose? of teach learning if there be no learn teachers those drawn to this entity were accepted by this entity without regard for any outcome. This entity accepted the honor duty placed upon it by its nature and its sense that to speak was its mission. exercise of the fire then I assume that the healer would be working with the same 
energy that we spoke of is entering through the crown chakra. Is this correct? I am Ra. This is incorrect with some additional notation necessary for your thought in continuing this line of study. When the magical personality has been seated in the green ray energy center for healing work. The energy then may be seen to be the crystalline center through which a body energy is channeled. Thus, this particular form of healing uses both the energy of the adept and the energy of the upward spiraling light as the green ray center becomes more brilliant and we would note this brilliance does not imply over activation but rather crystallization the energy of the green ray center of the body complex spirals twice firstly clockwise from the a green array energy center to the right shoulder through the head the right elbow down through the solar plexus and to the left hand. This sweeps all the body complex energy into a channel which then rotates the great circle clockwise again from a right we correct this instrument from the left to the feet 
to the right hand, to the crown, to the left hand, and so forth. Thus, the incoming body energy crystallized, regularized, and channeled by the adept's personality reaching to the green ray energy center may then pour out the combined energies of the adept which is incarnate thus offering the service of healing to an entity requesting that service. This basic situation is accomplished as well when there is an entity which is working through a channel to heal. The effect is that of polarization. The entity may or may not accept any percentage of this polarized life energy which is being offered in the occasion of the laying on of hands this energy is more specifically channeled and the opportunity for acceptance of this energy similarly more specific it may be seen that the a king's a chamber effect is not attempted in this form of working but rather the addition to one whose energies are low, the opportunity 
for the building up of those energies. A many of your distortions called illnesses may be aided by such means. Make a general statement which you can correct. The way I see the overall picture of healer and patient is that one to be healed has cause of a blockage in one of the energy centers or more, but we will just consider one particular problem. Because of this energy center blockage, the upward spiraling light that creates one of the seven bodies has been blocked from the maintenance of that body and this has resulted in a distortion from the perfection of that body that we call disease or a bodily anomaly which is other than perfect. The healer having suitably configured its energy centers is able to channel light the downward pouring light through its properly configured energy situation to the one to be healed. If the one to be healed has the mental configuration of acceptance of this light, the light then enters physical complex and reconfigures the distortion that was created by the original blockage. I'm sure I've made some mistakes in that, would you please correct me? I am wrong. Your mistakes were small. We would not at this time attempt a great deal of refinement of that statement as there is preliminary material which will undoubtedly come forward. We may say that there are various forms of healing in many only the energy of the adept is used in the exercise of fire. Some physical complex energy is also channeled. 
and we might note further that when the one wishing to be healed, though sincere, remains unhealed, as you call this distortion. You may consider pre-incarnative choices and your more helpful aid to such an entity may be the suggestion that it meditate upon the affirmative uses of whatever limitations it might experience. We would also note that in these cases the indigo ray workings are often of aid other than these notes we do not wish to further comment upon your statement at this working. seems to me that the primary import, primary thing of importance for those on the service to others path is the development of a attitude which I can only describe as fabric vibration uh, that this attitude would be developed through meditation ritual and a developing appreciation for the creation or creator which results in a state of mind that can only by me be expressed as an increase in vibration or oneness with all. Could you expand and correct that statement? I am well. We shall not correct this statement, but 
shall expand upon it by suggesting that to those qualities you may add the living day by day and moment by moment for the true adept lives more and more as it is. Could you uh, tell me of the number of possible energy transfers between two or more mind-body-spirit complexes? Um, is it uh, very large or are there few of them? I am wrong. The number is infinite for is not each mind body spirit complex unique could you define uh, this statement energy transfer between two mind body spirit complexes. I am wrong. This will be the last full query of this working. This entity still has transferred energy available but we find rapidly increasing the distortions towards pain in the neck the dorsal area and the wrists and a manual appendages. The physical energy transfer may be done a numerous ways we shall give two examples each begins with some sense of the self as creator or in some way the magical personality of being invoked. This may be consciously or unconsciously done. Firstly, that exercise of which we have spoken called the exercise of fire. This is, though, a physical energy, a transfer, 
are not that which is a deeply involved in the body complex combinations thusly the transfer is subtle and each transfer unique in what is offered and what is accepted. At this point we may note that this is the cause for the infinite array of possible energy transfers. The second energy transfer of which we would speak is the a sexual energy a transfer. This uh, takes place upon a, a non-magical a a level uh, by all those entities uh, which vibrate uh, a green array active. It is possible as in the case of this instrument which dedicates itself to the service of the one infinite creator to further refine this energy transfer when the other self also dedicates itself in a service uh, to the one infinite creator uh, the transfer is uh, doubled then the amount of energy uh, transferred is dependent only upon the amount of polarized sexual energy created and released. There are a refinements from this point onward leading to the realm of the high sexual magic. In the realm of the mental bodies there are variations of mental energy transferred. This is again a dependent upon the knowledge sought and the knowledge offered. The most 
common a mental energy, a transfer, is that of the teacher and the pupil. The amount of energy is dependent upon the quality of this offering upon the of the teacher as regards the purity of the desire to serve and the quality of information offered and upon the part of the student, the purity of the desire to learn and the quality of the mind vibratory complex which receives knowledge. Another form of mental energy transfer is that of the listener and the speaker. When the speaker is experiencing a mental, emotional, complex distortions towards anguish, sorrow, or other a mental pain. From what we have said before, you may perhaps garner knowledge of the variations possible in this transfer. The spiritual energy transfers are at the heart of all energy transfers as a knowledge of self and other self as creator is paramount and this is spiritual work. The varieties of spiritual energy transfer include those things of which we have spoken this day as we spoke upon the subject of the adept. Are there any brief queries before we leave this working? It 
is well that the candle of which spirals 10 degrees each working be never allowed to gutter as this would cause imbalance in the alignment of the appurtenances in their protective role for this instrument. Secondly, we might suggest attention to the neck area so that the cushion upon which it is supported be more comfortable. This difficulty has abbreviated many workings. We thank you, my friends, for your conscientiousness and your fastidiousness with a regard to these appurtenances which as our workings proceed seems to be increasing. Secondly, your decisions are completely your own as to that material which you may wish published from this working. I am I leave you glory in in the other and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth then rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai.